Hello everyone, welcome to another Rick's Picks. Today I'm going to be doing my review on the G.I. Joe classified figure, the Crimson Guard. Now this is going to be the Walmart exclusive that's on the retro card. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take a look at him in packaging. Then I'm going to take a look at the figure and his accessories. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts on him. And also, I'm going to do a quick comparison between this one and the regular G.I. Joe classified version of the Crimson Guard. So... Just remember, if you do like this video, hit that thumbs up or hit that subscribe button. It's a short click for you, but it would really help this channel clear out. So, without any further ado, let's get to the review. Alright, so here he is in packaging. I love the packaging to this. It's that retro, you know, old school 80s G.I. Joe card back where you got the explosion behind the figure that's coming out with this beautiful art. Alright, uh, you got the G.I. Joe logo choking hazards uh age restrictions now one of the problems with this off the bat and this is a common problem with both target exclusives and also walmart exclusives is the way they package them when they send them to your house they don't do that good so like i said you get you know creases and bends and stuff in your card back with someone like me who takes it out of packaging it doesn't really bother me but if you're somebody who wants to display it in packaging, what have you, you know, it, it's kind of a bummer that this, you know, card back will get damaged like that. You would probably be better off trying to find it in a store if you can find it in the stores, because sometimes these figures are very hard to find, you know, out in the wild. So with that said, let's take a look at the back. All right. This shows his actual card file, which is really nice. I wish more figures upon the you know gi joe classified line would actually have their you know file cards everybody that's part of this wave and you're legal so with all that being said let's open him up and see what he's about all right so here he is out of packaging he's a really good looking figure i love the colors i love how he pops at you so let's give him the rotation all right He's a very good looking, clean cut figure. Alright. Uh, he has the standard points of articulation, so his head does move. Alright, you got a shoulder joint, a bicep joint, an elbow joint, and a wrist joint. Alright, lift his arms up. He has a joint here underneath the rib cage, a swivel. Alright, you got a thigh joint. Uh, a little bit tight, but you do have a knee joint. All right. You have a swivel at the boot. And then you have an ankle joint. Okay. Put them on here nicely. Now, also, why I got them like this, he comes with a little display stand as well. So, that's pretty cool. And he fits on there pretty easy. All right. Get both feet in those pegs there there we go all right get that head straight now he comes with all the same weapons that the original uh classified guard comes in so he comes with an assault rifle all right a saber with the sheath all right he also comes with a knife And a pistol. Alright, so first off, let's see how well the pistol works with them. Now, these guys do usually have pretty flexible hands, so weapons should go in pretty easily. So, as you see, pistol goes in there nicely. No issues with that. And it goes right here. In this little holster. Alright, no issues there. Alright. Uh, comes with this dagger. Let's see how well the dagger works. Dagger fits in his hand. No problems with that. Alright. 
and just go right up in under here like that fits very well in there all right now he also comes with his backpack all right and on this you can either hook the sword onto it or you also got a knock there that you can hook the rifle up to all right now he also has if you look under here spot right here where the saber can also hook on to his thigh all right so let's get the saber out here as you see these weapons work very well with him there are no issues with them whatsoever which is really nice pops in there and then last but not least his assault rifle all right get that to fit in there so as you see the assault rifle fits in there nicely no issues with that and that also fits right up in here all right the knock goes right through the uh the piss, the um, finger grip. And for some reason, there it goes. Just like that, no issues. All right. So now, let's grab the classified figure. All right. Oops. Now, got a little bit of lean to them there. Now, both of these figures are essentially the same figure. Okay. The only difference is that one, this one's a little bit darker. Two, they put a little bit more deco into it. Like, he has a black face mask. Uh, if you look at the ribbons, this is all silver. This is silver and black. It's the same with these pieces here. They're gray and black, where on him, it's just a plain silver. Uh, he got a black strap with a red holster. Black strap with black holster. Uh, the two major differences, and I already kind of spoke of one, is the face plates. So, he has an all silver face plate. He has the black faceplate and the packs. All right. The packs. This one is black. This one is red. Now, me personally, my preference would be the standard classified one, which is this one here. Just because I like the darker look. I actually like the black face plate opposed to the silver. But the one thing that this one has... For me personally, over this one, is that he has the red pack. The reason why the red pack is a big point to me is because the original Crimson Guard figures all came with red packs. So that was a big reason why I wanted him was because I wanted that red pack for nostalgia reasons. So basically, it's a point of preference. As figures, they're both basically the same figure. They have the same points of articulation. They come with all the same weapons. It's just those minor differences to, that would be a preference point between people. Like I said, I really wanted this one because, it, you know, it comes with the red pack. I really wish this one would have came with the red pack as well. I mean, the black pack is nice, but for nostalgia reasons, I just really like the red. I think it meshes a little bit better with the figure, too. It gives a little bit more of a... Um, continuity to their color scheme for me personally so overall i think both figures are actually really good figures i think they work really well with your gi joe you know classified line they look really nice i really dig them they would go great with your tomax and samot obviously so with that being said i hope you did like this review if you did go ahead and hit that thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe it's a small click for you I'd really help this channel grow. So, until the next one, late. Hey, are you going to be in the Philadelphia area between September 9th and 10th? If so, check out RetroCon. It's affordable. They have lots of great vendors. There's going to be cosplay competitions, celebrities, and much, much more. So, go ahead and check out the link in the description. And also, Samuel J. Jones is going to be there, better known as Flash Gordon. So, check it out. Greg Evigan will be there, best known for BJ and the Bear, My Two Dads, and Tech Wars.
Voice actress Kathy Garver will be there, the one and only Firestar from Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Retrocon has been taken over by the Dukes, so we got Tom Walpad, John Snyder, and Kathy Batch, Luke, Bo, and Daisy, alongside with the Jersey General, representing the Dukes of Hazards. Yeehaw! Next on our list, all the way from Cybertron, the hit rock band Cybertronic Spree. And check this out, the rare Hasbro Proton Pack as a raffle prize. Now, you can't beat that. 